And the winner of the best LHR unlocker is... Hello my fellow miner, today we're going to take a look at the new LOL miner version 1.47 and compare it to T miner and T rex miner in LHR unlock. You may already have figured out which one is the best, or maybe that is what I want you to think because I'm baiting you, or maybe I only want you to think I'm baiting you, maybe there is no baiting someone like you with a lovely set of hair or maybe the most shiny head in the entire world. Are you still here? Or did you skip ahead? I really hope you didn't miss how to install the correct drivers and which drivers are actually required. If you did skip ahead, then I'll most likely see you in the comments where I then can refer to the video telling you that it's in the video. Enough time wasted, it is time for the graphic card introduction. Quickly moving on like a ninja, uh, we're going to have a look at the RTX 3050 from MSI, the Ventus 2X, the RTX 3060 LHR version 2 from Sotag Gaming, it has been working perfectly, in very good quality to be honest. The RTX 3060 Ti from Asus, their Tough series. No, that is actually the wrong picture. There, now we have the right one. The graphic card comes with two balls of steel in each fan. Military grade. Yes, yes, a piano was dropped on my head as a kid, so I am legally excused. We also have the MSI Venture 3, which is also an RTX 3060 Ti, rocking Hynix RAM. But this time it's a revision 2, and that means it can actually clock up to 1700 in Windows or 3400 in HiveOS. This very nice card is super slim and super noisy. Then we have the RTX 3070 iChill 4X from Inno 3D. It's actually surprisingly good. The quality is top notch. I have not changed anything. It's super cool actually. And then of course it comes with lots of RGBs that you cannot turn off via the software because the software part sucks. But it doesn't matter because more RGBs, more mega hash. Up next we have the RTX 3070 Ti from Sotag Gaming, also known as the DIY 3070 Ti because it drops thermal padding and comes with screws that have fallen out. I actually expected the quality to be uh, on pair with their RTX 3060, oh boy was I wrong, what a pile of poop. And then we have the RTX 3080 LHR from Gigabyte Vision Overclock Revision 2. It's actually quite good looking, but I wish you could get it in black brushed metal instead, even though it doesn't really matter because it's part of my mining rig and I never see it. The RTX 3080 12GB RAM edition from Gigabyte, the gaming overclock, LHR Extreme. Okay, it's not actually called Extreme. Unfortunately, my RTX 3080 Ti is on vacation and will be back after repairs. If you haven't subscribed, Uncle Donkey would very much like you to hit subscribe and afterwards that bell notification. Yes, the bell so you can get spammed even while you sit on the toilet. I mean, who doesn't want to get a random notification at random times around the clock? It is very nice. So remember to hit the bell notification and you will get unwanted messages all the time. Now let's move on and have a look at the overclock settings. First up is the RTX 3050. In HiveOS I lock the core clock at 1500 and the memory clock at 2200 which is 1100 in Windows. If you're using Windows, simply create a patch file based upon what you see here. Now let's have a look at the overclock settings for the RTX 3060 LHR version 2. In HiveOS I lock the core clock at 1552 and the memory clock to 2600. That is 1300 in Windows. If you are using Windows, simply create a patch file based upon what you see here and remember to run it as admin. Now let's have a look at the overclock settings for the RTX 3060 Ti Hynix Memory Revision 1. In HiveOS I lock the core clock to 1350 and the memory clock to 2100 which is 1050 in Windows. If you have a dual fan RTX 3060 Ti using Hynix Memory Revision 1 then you may only be able to clock at 1800. Simply create a bash file based upon what you see here if you are using Windows. Now let's have a look at the RTX 3060 Ti Hynix Memory Revision 2. 
and high voice are like the core clock at 1500 and the memory clock at 3200. That is 1600 in Windows. However, this is the revision 2 and you can actually go even higher. I don't because I don't feel comfortable with it. Now let's have a look at the overclock clock settings for the RTX 3070. In high OS, I lock the core clock at 1125 and the memory clock to 2600, which is 1300 in Windows. If you're using Windows, simply create a bash file based upon what you see here and run it as admin. Now let's have a look at the overclock clock settings for the RTX 3070 Ti. In high OS, I lock the core clock at 900 and the memory clock to 2300, which is 1150 in Windows. If you're using Windows, simply create a bash file based upon what you see here. Now let's have a look at the overclock settings for the RTX 3080, 10 gigs. In high ones, I lock the core clock at 1500 and the memory clock at 3400. That is 1700 in Windows. If you are using Windows, simply create a bash file based upon what you see here. And please remember to run it as admin. Now let's have a look at the final card. Before I get my RTX 3080 Ti back from repairs, the RTX 3080, 12 gigs. In high OS, I lock the core clock at 1400 and the memory clock at 2400. That is 1200 in Windows. If you are using Windows, simply create a bash file based upon what you see here. And now the time has finally come to have a look at the average reported results. First up, the RTX 3050, 16.6 MHz per second at 79 watts, which gives an efficiency of 0.210. Now the RTX 3060 LHR version 2, 38.3 MHz per second at 111 watts, which gives an efficiency of 0 0.345. And now the RTX 3060 Ti Hynix revision 1, 46.1 MHz per second at 132 watts, which gives an efficiency of 0 0.349. And now the RTX 3060 Ti Hynix revision 2. 49.8 MHz per second at 155 watts, which gives an efficiency of 0.321. Now, the RTX 3070. 48.1 MHz per second at 122 watts, which gives an efficiency of 0.394. Now, the RTX 3070 Ti. 60.8 MHz per second at 193 watts, which gives an efficiency of 0.315. Now, the RTX 3080, 10 gigs. 79.7 .7 MHz per second at 248 watts, which gives an efficiency of 0.321. And now, the RTX 3080, 12 gigs. 62.8 MHz per second at 273 watts, which gives an efficiency of 0 0.230. Now let's have a look at the RTX 3050 again. In this case, G minor is actually the winner, while NB minor doesn't actually support any LHR unlock, and I could not find a way to force it, and neither for T Rex. And LOL Miner can actually unlock it, but it does it very badly. And that is actually due to uh, the RTX 3050 using LHR version 3, which no one has tried to crack yet, I guess. Or bypass in this case. If we have a look at the RTX 3060, you can see that uh, LOL Miner is actually the clear winner this time. There's a huge jump compared to where LOL Miner used to be to where it is now in this version which is pretty amazing to be honest. The same goes for the RTX 3060 Ti's, both of them. It's like huge gains uh, compared to both uh, T-Rex and G minor. And the same actually goes for the 3070 Ti and 3080 10 gigs. Now, the 3080 12 gigs is also an LHR version 3, and in this case, the best minor is G minor. If you have an RTX 3080 12 gigs, then I highly recommend that you either use G minor in this case here, or you clock it very low at uh, logging the core at 900 and the memory at 2400 in HiveOS and 1200 in Windows. That will work in all miners and should give you around 61 megahertz to 63 megahertz per second at if I remember correctly, 220 watts. 
you also have the option of using G minor in this case here and then setting the LHR value at 56.6. Do not let it auto tune, it will take forever. Just trust me and set it at 56.6. Now, you may ask me why haven't I tested NB minor? Well, NB minor hasn't actually released anything new for a long while and there is no real reason to test it because it's still the same result. Of course, I could have uh, included the result for the RTX 3060 Ti Hynix revision 2. But the results will be pretty close to G minor anyway, so there's no real reason to actually test it. Then you may be wondering, where is my RTX 3080 Ti? Well, it's on vacation and I should get it back within a week, I think, from repairs. Oh, and the reason why T-Rex is actually included here with the latest driver is because before I got access to Lot Miner version 1.47, I was actually doing a driver test for six different drivers for T-Rex Miner. Speaking about drivers, it is highly recommended that you do not use the one that comes when you install High Voice, but that you install either of these you see on the screen now. If you're using Windows, then you should be fine with uh, whatever driver you are actually using. Anyway, open a shell and fire off one of these commands to update the drivers. If you are using USB 2, then be very, very patient. It can take a very long time, somewhere between half an hour to two hours, depending on how doggy you are. If you are running HiveOS on a USB 3 or even an SSD or something faster, then it would take you absolutely no time. I think it took me like two minutes and then it was done. You can get the commands from the description. Now, how do you get this version? Well. It hasn't been released yet. I have a pre-release here and that allowed me to do the testing in good time. I give it a good 50-50% chance that this video will be released the same time as Slot Miner version 1.47. However, if it isn't, then just be patient and as soon as it is released, go to the description of the video and copy the command and that will allow you to update it in high voice. So in short, I will include what you need in the description. I must admit that I'm very happy with this release and Lot Miner has done a great job here, a really really good job and we haven't actually seen any improvement on LHR unlock for quite a while so yeah, it was much requested and much needed and it's actually very good. As a bonus it also works on your LHR version 1 cards and I now mine at 41 MHz per second on racers in Hive OS, so that is pretty awesome. I hope this will kick the other teams a little bit in the butt to hurry up and get something awesome out of the door. I know G Miner has released a lot of stuff, um, but NB Miner and T Rex Miner are pretty much sleeping. Also included in Dot Miner is actually where you can see the memory temperatures, but I think the only one missing that now is actually NB Miner. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to help me out, then please share the video with someone you know. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. I hope to see you in the next one. Man, if I sound a little bit tired, then it's because I am super tired. It took ages to test all these uh, different miners, to be honest. Now, now I'll be gone like a ninja in the wind. <sighs> okay, straight to bed. Ah, see you in the next one.